Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, carbohydrates, also known as saccharides or sugars, are the most abundant biomolecules and are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. These are essential for proper body functioning and provide energy to cells. Based upon their structure, carbohydrates may be classified as monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. In the biochemistry laboratory, there are certain tests that we can use to identify whether a sample contains carbohydrate or not, and if it does contain a carbohydrate, what type of carbohydrate is present in the sample. These tests can be used for the detection of carbohydrates in various body fluids, thus helping in disease detection. Today, we will be performing three tests for the identification of carbohydrates. The first test that we will perform is known as the Mollish test. The Mollish test is basically a general test used for the identification of carbohydrates and will give a positive result for all carbohydrates regardless of the fact whether a monosaccharide is present or a disaccharide is present. The principle of this test is based upon the dehydration of the carbohydrate in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid to yield an aldehyde which will condense with two molecules of a phenol, usually alpha nephthol, to give a purple or violet colored product. The aldehyde formed is furfural if the sugar present is pentose and hydroxymethyl furfural if the sugar present is a hexose. To proceed with this test, we will first take 1 ml of the sample in a test tube. Next, we will add 2 to 3 drops of alpha nephthol. Mix the contents of the tube to ensure that alpha nephthol mixes well with the sample. Next, we will add 1 to 2 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid to this tube. This step needs to be done carefully since sulfuric acid is corrosive. The formation of a purple or violet colored ring will indicate that a carbohydrate is present in this sample. The main precaution for this test is ensuring proper mixing once alpha nephthol is added since alpha nephthol is dense and tends to settle at the base of the test tube. The second test that we will perform is the Benedix test which is used for the detection of reducing sugars which are carbohydrates in which the carbonyl carbon is free for reaction. The Benedix test make, makes use of the Benedix reagent which contains copper 2 sulfate, sodium citrate and sodium carbonate. Copper 2 sulfate provides copper ions for the reaction. Sodium carbonate provides alkaline conditions for this reaction and sodium citrate prevents the reduction of copper ions during storage of the reagent. The principle of this test is that when an, a carbohydrate is heated 
in the presence of an alkali it yields to form an enediol which reduces copper 2 ions to copper 1 ion these copper 1 ions tend to form the brick red precipitate of copper 1 oxide which is visible at the end of the reaction to proceed with this test we will first take 1 ml of the sample in a test tube this sample we will add 2 ml of benedict's reagent This is then heated for approximately 2 to 3 minutes and checked for color change. Ideally, this heating should be done on a water bath, but if a water bath is not available, direct heating can be done carefully. If the sample contains a carbohydrate, you will notice that the colors of the solution changes from blue to green to yellow to orange and eventually red The formation of this red color indicates that this sample contains a reducing sugar The last test that we will perform is the iodine test which is used to detect the presence of a polysaccharide namely starch in the sample The principle of this test is that iodide ions present in the iodine solution get absorbed in the amylose present in the starch molecule and produce a blue black color. To proceed with this test, we will take 1 ml of the sample in a test tube. this sample we will add 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution iodine solution is originally brown in color we will add 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution to this iodine solution is originally brown in color the presence of blue black color indicates that this sample contains starch it is worth noticing that all three tests done today are qualitative tests that is They will give us an idea about the identity of the carbohydrate present but not the amount of carbohydrate that was present in the sample. Dear students, amino acids are the building blocks of proteins and are named so because they contain an amino group that is NH2. 
and the carboxylic acid group that is COOA. There are certain tests that can be done in the biochemistry laboratory to identify whether a sample contains an amino acid or a protein. Today, we will be performing three such tests, namely the ninhydrin test, the biuret test, and the xanthoprotic test. The ninhydrin test is the first test that we will be performing today and is a general test that indicates the presence of any amino acid or protein in the sample. To proceed with the test, we will first take 1 ml of the sample in a test tube. Then, we will add to this sample a few drops of 1% ninhydrin reagent. Sample will be mixed and heated using a spirit lamp or a Bunsen burner. The principle of this test is that ninhydrin carries out oxidative deamination of the amino acid, leading to the formation of purple or violet colored complex. All proteins and amino acids will give a positive color that is purple color for this reaction except for proline which will give us a yellow colored product. Proline contains a secondary amino group that is NH rather than a primary amino group that is present in all other amino acids hence the difference in the color of the product formed. The next test is the bi test which will only give positive results if the sample contains at least two peptide bonds or any protein. The sample, if it contains any amino acid, will not give a positive result with this test. To proceed with the biuret test, we will first transfer 1 ml of the sample to a test tube. Then add 1 ml of 10% sodium hydroxide or NaOH to this sample. The next step we will use 1% copper sulfate solution and add it drop by drop to this sample that already contains 10% sodium hydroxide solution. observe the formation of violet color 
if the sample contains at least two peptide bonds or protein. The principle of this reaction is the incorporation of copper ions in between the peptide bonds. The third test is the xanthoproject test. This test is specific for amino acids that have an aromatic ring in them, that is tyrosine or tryptophan. The principle of this test is, when the amino acid is heated with concentrated nitric acid, there is nitration of the aromatic ring, giving us a yellow colored compound. Addition of sodium hydroxide will convert this into a salt of this sodium hydroxide, resulting in the formation of a bright orange or red precipitate. To proceed with this test, we will first take 1 ml of the sample in a test tube. Next, we will add approximately 2 ml of concentrated nitric acid to this sample. This step again needs to be done very carefully since nitric acid is concentrated and corrosive. You will instantly observe that yellow color of the solution if the amino acid present is an aromatic amino acid. Heat the tube slightly. You will observe that the intensity of the color increases. Next, very carefully add a few drops of 40% sodium hydroxide to this solution. the formation of orange color when sodium hydroxide is added to this solution. This deep orange color formed at the end of the reaction indicates that the sample contained an aromatic amino acid such as tyrosine or tryptophan. Similar to carbohydrates, these three tests can only give us an idea about the presence of a certain amino acid or protein in the sample, but they do not tell us about the amount or quantity of the sample present. Hence, these three tests can be qualified as qualitative tests, not quantitative tests.
dear students lipids are a class of heterogeneous compounds that contain hydrocarbons and include fats oils steroids waxes and their derivatives to identify whether a sample contains a lipid or not there are certain tests that we use in the biochemistry laboratory today we will perform three such tests namely the grease spot test the solubility test and the sponification test to proceed with the grease spot test we will require a small piece of filter paper on this piece of filter paper we will place one drop of our sample Once the drop of sample is placed you will notice that it spreads over the filter paper and becomes translucent light can now pass through this piece of filter paper the principle of this pre spot test The second test that we will perform is the solubility test whereby we will compare the solubility of the sample in distilled water and chloroform. The principle of this test is that fats are generally not soluble in water but are soluble in organic solvents such as chloroform and ether. To proceed with this test we will take a small volume of the sample in a test tube. one test tube we will add 2 ml of distilled water the other test tube we will add 2 ml of chloroform mix the contents of both test tubes you will observe that the test tube in which chloroform was added gives a clear solution indicating that our fat sample that was present is soluble in chloroform whereas the test tube in which water was added contains two distinct layers one layer contains oil while the other layer contains water this further confirms that our sample contained a lipid the third test is the sponification test the principle of this test is that when a lipid is heated with an alkali in the presence of an alcohol it will hydrolyze to yield glycerol and a salt of that fatty acid the salt of the fatty acid formed in this case gives a soap To proceed with this test we will take 1 ml of sample in the test tube To this sample we will transfer 3 ml 
of 0.5 normal alcoholic sodium hydroxide or NaOA. Mix the contents of the test tube and heat it using a water bath. If a water bath is not available, the test tube can be heated directly for approximately 5 to 10 minutes. After heating, you will observe that there are two distinct layers in the test tube. The denser layer contains soap or the salt of the fatty acid formed as a result of this reaction, whereas the liquid layer contains glycerol and any leftover alkali. This test confirms that the sample contained a lipid.